Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, Pray for us. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me and sent me to preach good news to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, and to let the oppressed go free. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and let us entrust ourselves to God's merciful love. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who made your only begotten Son eternal High Priest, grant that those He has chosen as ministers and stewards of your mysteries, may be found faithful in carrying out the ministry they have received. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the beginning of the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, 
and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus evening came, and morning followed the first day. Then God said, Let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome, and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came, and morning followed the second day. Then God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin, so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin, and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth, and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came, and morning followed the third day. Then God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days, and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night, and he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came, and morning followed, the fourth day. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord be glad in His works. May the Lord be glad in His works. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are great indeed. You are clothed with majesty and glory. Robe in light as with a cloak. May the Lord be glad in his works. You fix the earth upon its foundation, not to be moved forever. With the ocean as with a garment, you cover it. Above the mountains, the waters stood. May the Lord be glad in his works. You send forth springs into the water courses that wind among the mountains. Beside them the birds of heaven dwell. From among the branches they send forth their song. May the Lord be glad in his works. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have wrought them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Alleluia. May the Lord be glad in his works. Please stand.
Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. After making the crossing to the other side of the sea, Jesus and his disciples came to the land at Genesaret and tied up there. As they were leaving the boat, People immediately recognized him. They scurried about the surrounding country and began to bring, bring in the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. Whatever villages or towns or countryside he entered, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch only the tassel of his cloak, and as many as touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, after several weeks of reading from the letter to the Hebrews, we begin reading today from the first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis. And we begin from the very beginning, the story of creation. We heard in our first reading today the first four days of creation. And the story of creation tells us only one truth, that God is the creator. Our first reading today is a story of creation. If our first reading talks of creation, our gospel today is a story of recreation. Jesus heals many people. Many people go to Jesus. They want to touch the tassel of Jesus' cloak in order to be healed. And healing is a form of recreation, creating again. Because sickness disfigures us. Evil and sin destroys God's creation. And so Jesus came in order to recreate us. Creation and recreation. God created everything beautiful, but sin, evil, sickness, and death entered the world, disfigured humanity, destroyed the world. But God will never leave us destroyed and disfigured. Hindi tayo iiwan ng Diyos na sira. Hindi tayo, hindi siya katulad natin na kapag nasira ang isang bagay, minsan sinasabi natin, hayaan mo ng sirayan, palitan na lang natin. God will never say that. God will always recreate. God will always create us anew. He is the God of creation but he is also the God of recreation. 
My dear brothers and sisters, what are the areas in your life that need recreation? Ano kaya yung mga aspeto sa ating buhay bilang individual, bilang isang bansa, na kailangan ng paglikhang muli ng Panginoon? Maybe your married life or your family life needs recreation. Probably, you began as a happy couple, as a happy family, full of joy, full of love. But somewhere along the way, things changed. Love faded. And so ask God to recreate your love for each other as husband and wife or as a family. Ask God to recreate the unity, the joy of your relationship as a couple and as a family. This pandemic has brought about a lot of destruction in our lives. But we know that God continues to recreate us. We are in the process of recreation and we are awaiting for that new heaven and new earth brought about by the recreating work of God. Maybe your life needs recreation because of sin, because of evil in our lives, we were disfigured. And so let us ask God's forgiveness because the forgiveness of God is a recreating power in our lives. My dear brothers and sisters, God creates everything beautiful. And let us thank God for creating us. Let us thank Him even more for not leaving us disfigured and destroyed. Let us thank God for always sending Jesus to recreate us with His forgiveness and with His love. Please stand. Let us pray to the Father who wants everyone to be healed. He does not reject those who come to Him in need. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That as a church, we may not close our hearts to the needs of others, but share God's love with everyone. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may all work for justice and human dignity, especially for those who are left out by society, including the weak and the poor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we, as a community, may support and uplift one another with the love and gentleness which the Lord has shown us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those who are sick in mind, body, and spirit may find complete healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the faithful departed may have eternal rest. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in silence for our own intentions. We also pray for the intentions of those who requested our prayers and of those who offered in this Mass. O 
Almighty Father, hear our prayers and make our hearts ready to welcome and love our needy brothers and sisters. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, you have willed that your priests should minister at the holy altar and serve your people. Grant by the power of this sacrifice, we pray, that their labors may constantly please you, and in your church bear that fruit which lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We'll lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Broderick our Administrator and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us now pray to the Father as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I, I am, am not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
we stand. Let us pray. May the divine sacrifice we have offered and received, O Lord, give new life to your priests and to all your servants, that united to you in unfailing love, they may receive the grace of giving worthy service to your majesty, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.
Thank you. 